let me welcome you to this lecture. In the last lecture, we have seen how an sp2 hybridized carbon atom can bind to a metal center, that is in case of the alkenyl ligand. And we have also seen how an sp hybridized carbon atom can form a sigma bond to a metal center, that is in case of alkynyl ligands. So we are essentially seeing how an sp2 hybridized carbon atom in an alkene can form sigma bond complexes with metal center desired alkenyl 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 sorry And we have also seen how an sp hybridized carbon atom in an alkyne can form complexes with metal center, that is alkynyl complexes. So both of these two types of ligands form mostly sigma bonding complexes with metal centers, while though they both of these ligands contain empty uh, pi star orbitals which are capable of forming, forming pi backbonding with the metal centers but the experimental evidence suggests that there is the extent of pi backbonding in these complexes are uh, very uh, very small. So uh, during this lecture we will discuss about the, uh, the chemistry of a related ligand again uh, Complexes formed by an sp2 hybridized uh, ligand uh, carbon atom again that is in this case Complexes formed by a carbene ligand as well as complexes formed by an sp hybridized carbon atom that is a carbine ligand in this case. So this we call, the ligand in this case we call a carbene ligand, a carbene is a ligand, but in this case a carbine that is an sp hybridized carbon atom is a, is a ligand. So in both of these cases, in case of carbene complexes as well as in case of carbine complexes, what we see is that there is formation of a formal double bond in case of the carbon complexes, while in this case, in case of the carbon complexes, we see that there is a metal to carbon formal triple bond is formed. So uh, these complexes are also are named as alkyl alkylene uh, complexes for the carbon complexes are also known as alkylene complexes while the carbine complexes are known as alkyl-diene complex here. So the difference is obvious. In this case we say alkyl-nyl complexes where an alkyne is involved in binding to a metal center while in this case an sp hybridized carbon atom is involved in uh, bonding with uh, metal center and we call this alkyl-dyne complexes and these are called alkyl-dyne complexes because an sp2 hybridized carbon atom is essentially bonded to a metal center uh, unlike what we see in case of alkyl complexes where an alkyne is involved in bonding with uh, so alkene is uh, for involved in bonding with metal center so these are alkenyl complexes not alkyl alkynyl complexes. So, we have already encountered or we have seen already the uh, preparation for first uh, 
metal carbene complexes, that is the fissure carbene complexes. So we discussed about formation of fissure carbene complexes when, while discussing about the reactivity of metal carbonyl uh, complexes with alkyl lithium or alkyl or aryl lithium reagents as well as with alkyl or aryl magnesium halides that is uh, with Grignard reagents. So because of the nucleophilic character of the carbonyl carbon atom, these alkyl or aryl groups will come and attack on the carbonyl carbon atom and this eventually leads to formation of metal carbon double bonded uh, species. So let us go and see once again the synthesis of fissure carbon complexes that was discovered in the year 1964 by the Rhesus group of fission. So we will start with a metal carbonyl complex and then react it with alkyl or aryl lithium reagents as well as you can also use RMDX. This will eventually lead to formation of metal carbon double bone. Or you can also have magnesium instead of lithium when you use RMGX. After that, this intermediate complex is alkylated. Fission used dilomethane for the alkylation reaction. While nowadays we will use the Marvin's reagent that is oxonium salt for alkylation reaction, which is you know which is much easier to be handled as compared to uh, diazomethane, and that is why the performing the reaction becomes easier when you use uh, Marvin's reagent instead of. Diazomethane. So this is how fissure carbene complex, the first uh, carbene metal carbene com uh, complex was prepared in 1964, where there is a formal metal to carbon double bond. So after this preparation of the first uh, uh, metal carbene complex, several other metal carbonyl complexes of this kind, where metal is bonded to a uh, carbon atom and there is a formal double bond between the metal and the carbon uh, carbon center has been uh, reported and all of these compounds are essentially known as fissure carbon complexes. The reason is uh, these complexes have a, a few specific features which are common uh, in all of these fissure carbon complexes and these features are essentially the first and foremost feature of these uh, fissure carbon complexes is that the metal center is in low oxidation state. As we can see over here, the tungsten atom in these complexes is in zero oxidation state and this is the necessary criteria for formation of stable fissure carbon complexes that the metal must be in low oxidation state. So the second criteria is that presence of pi acceptor auxiliary ligands. So what we see in this case, uh, in this particular fissocarbon complex is that the metal center that is tungsten is attached also to five carbonyl ligands apart from the carbon ligand. And these carbonyl ligands we know are pi acceptor ligands and this is also another important criteria for formation of stable fissure carbon complexes that the metal must be attached to other ligands which are pi acceptor uh, character otherwise the complex itself will not be stable. So the third important criteria is that the presence of
by donor substituent on carbene carbon atom. So what we see here is that the carbon carbon center is attached to a OME group here and then an R group over here and the presence of uh, such substituents with heteroatom which can essentially act as pi donors in this case the oxygen atom has two lone pair of electrons and these can be used to, to form pi uh, bonds with other atoms in this case with this carbon atom it is uh, it is you know it is it's possible to it is you know it can form uh, by bone by donation of these lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. So, presence of such uh, substituent atoms which can form uh, by bones by by donation, uh, you know, by donor substituent atoms are an again an important criteria for formation of stable fissure carbon complexes. So, the fourth important aspect of these fissure carbon complexes or uh, which is common among all the fissure carbon complexes is that the carbon carbon atom in these uh, complexes are essentially electrophilic in nature. That is, the carbon carbon atom in these fissure carbon complexes are electron deficient and they are electrophilic in nature. So, in order to understand or in order to find out why, you know, these uh, criteria must be fulfilled for formation of stable fissure carbon complexes, we need to uh, look at the bonding in these fissure carbon complexes and then we can tell why, you know, the carbon carbon atom is electrophilic in nature or why the presence of pi donor substituent on the carbon carbon atom is a very important feature uh, for formation of stable fissure carbon complexes. So, let us look at the bonding in these metal carbonyl, uh, metal carbene complexes. So, the carbene carbon atom in uh, these metal uh, carbene complexes as we can see from here are sp2 hybridized. And two of the sp2 hybridized um, lobes of the carbon carbon atom are used essentially to form sigma bonds with the substituents, these two substituents, while the third sp2 hybridized lobe over here is uh, left unused in the carbon. So then there is a, also an unhybridized P orbital on the carbon carbon atom. Now the carbon carbon atom is left with two more electrons because after formation of these two sigma bonds with the substituents over here, two more electrons of the carbon carbon atom are left and we can uh, put both of these uh, electrons in the, uh, one electron in the sp2 hybridized orbital while another electron we can put on the unhybridized p orbital and in this case when we put the electrons in this way the total spin of the system is going to be equal to 1 and this electronic state of the carbene is uh, known as the triplet state because the spin multiplicity is going to be equal to 3 for this configuration. Now we can also have uh, put the electrons You can put both the electrons in the sp2 hybridized uh, orbital here and in this case we can see that, that the total spin of the system of the carbene is going to be equal to 0 and the spin multiplicity is that is why going to be equal to 1 and we call this electronic configuration as singlet state. So in case of the fissure carbon complexes, the carbene carbon atom uh, is in singlet electronic uh, state and that is why both the electrons on the carbon carbon atom essentially lie 
only on the sp2 hybridized orbital here and these two electrons can now be donated to metal orbitals to form carbene carbon to metal sigma bone so these will be donated to metal centers to met empty metal d orbitals so that a metal to carbon single bond is essentially or the sigma bond is formed sigma bond so that is dative sigma bond electron density essentially transfers from the carbon carbon to the metal center over here so after the sigma bond is formed now the metals since these metal centers in uh, in fissure carbon complexes we have described that these metal centers are in low oxidation state and that is why these metals are electron rich and there are electrons in the metal d orbitals left so these metal uh, orbitals uh, field metal orbitals can now donate electron density to the uh, empty p orbital on the carbon carbon atom and this essentially leads to formation of the pi bond in this uh, metal carbon uh, complexes and there is we can write this resonant configuration as in this way so there is formation of metal to uh, carbon 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 uh, by back bonding and this essentially leads to formation of metal to carbon double bond now we can write another resonant form of this uh, carbene uh, complexes and that is possible because the oxygen atom here has filled uh, p orbitals that are not used for bonding so these are lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom and these electrons can also be donated to the uh, empty p orbital on the carbon carbon atom and this also leads to formation of a carbon to oxygen and double bond and therefore we can write another resonant form in uh, for these metal carbon complexes that is we can write for this particular bonding pattern what we can write is a double bond between the carbon and the hetero atom over here this is going to be positively charged as the oxygen has donated electrons uh, to the carbon carbon atom to form a carbon oxygen double bond here and the metal is going to be negatively charged as it has received electron density from the carbon carbon atom in the, by formation of this dative sigma bond over here. So we can write two resonance forms for the um, metal carbon uh, complexes and uh, what these two resonance forms tell us is that the bond order that is the metal to carbon bond order is going to be somewhere between the between uh, one and two because the bond order is going to be more than one but less than two because this particular resonance form is also dominant apart from uh, this resonance form where there is metal carbon double bond is present. Also the bond order for the carbon and oxygen or carbon and the heteroatom substituent which forms uh, by bond again with the carbon carbon center and the bond order is for these two uh, for the bond between uh, these two atoms as well is going to be somewhere between one and two as we see in this case uh, it forms a single bond while in this case there is formation of a double bond so again the bond uh, distances if you look at the metal, car uh, metal to carbon bond distances as well the carbon to heteroatom bond distances in metal carbon complexes you will find that the, uh, the bond distances are essentially MC bond is shorter than MC single bond, but longer than MC double bond. Similarly, CO bond is also shorter than CO single bond but longer than CO double bond 
That is again because uh, there are two resonance forms available in this metal carbene uh, complexes. So this is the reason why the presence of heteroatom substituents which can form uh, double bond, this sort of double bonds or which can act as pi donors to form double bond with the carbon, uh, carbene carbon atom is important in uh, formation of stable fissure carbene complexes. Also the metal must be in low oxidation state otherwise the metal will not be able to form this uh, by backbone bonding with the carbon carbon atom and this is also important for formation of stable fissure carbon complex. This also explains why the carbon carbon atom in fissure carbon complexes are electrophilic in nature because they, of the presence of this empty p orbital on the carbon carbon atom it is possible that uh, nucleophiles or UV spaces can come and you know uh, bind with these uh, this particular empty p orbital on the carbon carbon atom and this uh, essentially uh, this will this then therefore the carbon carbon atom will uh, is electrophilic and nucleophiles can come and attack on this carbon carbon atom. So interestingly, just 10 years after preparation of this fissure carbon complex uh, and the characteristic of these fissure carbon complexes we have discussed already. So 10 years after preparation of fissure carbon complex, another type of uh, metal carbon complexes were prepared and these metal carbon complexes prepared by the Schrock group uh, do not have the characteristics of, uh, of fissure carbon complexes. So this was done in 1974. So, and the, these metal carbon complexes are named as Schrock carbon complexes. So, Schrock prepared a tantalum carbon complex. So he started with a tantalum, a tantalum alkyl complex and did reaction with lithium neopentyl so that he substitutes uh, the chloride uh, ligands in the precursor complex by the neopentyl uh, groups over here. So let us first substitute one of the uh, chloride ligands by uh, the neopentyl group of here. So when you substitute one of the chloride ligand, one produces this sort of a complex where one of the chloride is left and there is uh, there are four a neopentyl uh, ligands attached to the tantalum metal of here. Now, these uh, hydrogen atoms that are attached to the alpha carbon atom in, uh, in these uh, complexes are essentially highly acidic in nature because, of the, because the alkyl group is attached to the metal center and that is why it is possible that you know they are removed by alpha hydrogen elimination and that leads to essential formation of so one of the hydrogen atom is essentially released and this leads to formation of this is a concerted process and Alpha hydrogen elimination takes place essentially, and this particular group is lost from this molecule after after alpha hydrogen elimination, and this leads to formation of metal carbon double bond here in this way. Plus C Me4 is lost after you know this hydrogen atom. It, 
apart along with this uh, particular alkyl group uh, is lost as CN4 now. So now once again this another equivalent of this lithium neopentyl is added. So the this particular CI uh, chloride ligand will also be lost now and will be left to it. This metal carbon complex. Now, what we see here, the metal carbon complex prepared over here uh, does not have the characteristic of Fischer carbon complexes, and that is why they are different from Fischer carbon complexes and essentially metal carbon complexes, which are of this type, are known as Fischer carbon complexes. And their characteristics are, or the characteristics of Fischer carbon complexes are, metal is in high oxidation state. So, unlike what we see in case of uh, the Fischer carbon complexes, the metal was in low oxidation state. In case of Schrock carbon complexes, metals are typically in high oxidation state. Secondly, what we also see is that unlike what we see in case of Fischer carbon complexes where there were pi acceptor auxiliary ligands attached to the metal center, in case of Schrock carbon complexes, uh, there are no uh, pi acceptor ligands as the alkyl groups attached to the metal center. These are only sigma donor ligands and they are, cannot uh, you know, accept pi electron density from the metal center. So, pi acceptor auxiliary ligands are absent. We also see that unlike the Fischer carbon complexes, the subsequent on the, uh, there are no heteroatom subsequent on the carbon carbon atom in case of the Schrock carbon complexes or no pi donor substituents are attached to the carbon carbon atom. So, pi donor substituents on the carbene carbon atom is absent. And the reactivity of the Schrock carbon complexes, that is reactivity of the car Schrock car uh, carbon, uh, carbon atom is also different from the reactivity of the carbon carbon atom in case of the Fischer carbon complexes as the carbon carbon atom in case of the Schrock carbon complexes are nucleophilic in nature. For the carbon carbon atom in Schrock carbon complexes are essentially electron rich carbon atom. So we see the reason why the carbon carbon atom in straw carbon complexes are nucleophilic in nature. That is, if we look at the bonding once again, what we will see is that the carbon carbon atom though it is Again, sp2 hybridized, and in case of the Fischer carbon complexes, now the electronic state of the carbon carbon atom is triplet, not singlet, as what we see in case of the Fischer carbon complexes. And the two electrons on the carbon carbon atom essentially reside, one of the electrons resides on the sp2 hybridized orbital, while the another electron resides on the unhybridized p orbital on the carbon carbon atom. So now this orbital can form metal to carbon uh, sigma bond, while uh, electrons in this particular orbital can form metal to carbon a double bond with metal orbitals of right symmetry. So this is how the metal to carbon double bond as well as metal to carbon single bond is formed in case of short carbon complexes and that is why in this case the presence of uh, pi donor substituent on the carbon carbon atom is not important for stability of the metal carbon complexes at the same time 
uh, the metal does not need to be in low oxidation state for donation of high electron density to the carbon carbon center as well as the carbon carbon atom in this case as we see that the unhybridized p orbital on the carbon carbon atom contains one electron and this can essentially be donated to uh, other uh, Lewis acids or the carbon carbon atom can uh, is nucleophilic and it can undergo electrophilic attack on it. So we will see reactions now where the reactivity of fissure carbon complex as well as the reactivity of strop carbon complexes are established. So if you take a fissure carbon complex, that is, if you take and then do reaction with a Lewis base, for example, if you do reaction with ammonia, the ammonia can come and attack on the unhybridized P orbital on carbon carbon atom and this will eventually lead to removal of OME. So we will have formation of methanol. So OME is released as methanol while NH3 binds to the carbon carbon atom now as NH2 over here and this reaction proceeds because Nitrogen atom is a better uh, pi donor as compared to oxygen atom because it is it can uh, it is less electronegative as compared to oxygen atom and that is why it acts as a better pi donor and the uh, the metal uh, carbon uh, carbon carbon atom to nitrogen double bond is you know the, the extent of double bond in case of uh, for the, between carbon and nitrogen is more as compared to the extent of double bond that is that can be formed between carbon and oxygen and this essentially it stabilizes the second resonant form where there is double bond between uh, carbon and the heteroatom in case of fissure carbon complexes and that is the reason why this particular uh, product forms easily when we uh, when we add ammonia to this uh, precursor complex over here. So this essentially established the electrophilic nature of carbon carbon atom and the reaction proceeds because the carbon carbon atom is essentially electron deficient in nature and that is why the Lewis base ammonia can come and attack on the carbon carbon atom. So another reaction that we will see over here is the which will demonstrate the nucleophilic character of the carbon carbon atom in case of strop carbon complexes. So when strop carbon complex this particular stroke carbon complex is reacted with a Lewis acid that is with trihyl aluminium because the carbon carbon atom is now electron rich. So the, it will react with Al uh, Ut3 here and it will bind with the aluminium atom. In this way because the carbon carbon atom in this case is electron rich. So this essentially demonstrates the uh, reactivity of carbon carbon atom in fissure carbon complexes as well as in case of strong carbon complexes. Now, if you look at the CO stretching vibrations in uh, metal uh, carbonyl complexes as well as in uh, metal carbene complexes, what you will see is that for this particular complex, the CO stretching vibration is 2108 centimeters. While for a fissure carbon complexes containing carbonyl ligand as auxiliary ligand, that is for
the CO stretching vibration for this uh, particular complex where carbonyl is present as a auxiliary ligand is quite less than what we see for the free carbonyl complex without the carbon ligand. So this essentially tells that the carbonyl ligand in this case is receiving higher electron density, pi electron density in the pi star uh, molecular orbital of the carbon monoxide ligand and that is the reason why the CO stretching vibration has not decreased as compared to what we see in the parent complex CrCO6 here. So this essentially tells us that the, the carbene ligand here or the alkylidine uh, ligand here is a poor pi acceptor as compared to the carbonyl ligand and it is a better sigma donor. So it is a better sigma donor and pi, poor pi acceptor than carbene or alkylidines are poor pi acceptor and better sigma donor than CO. So this is what we learned from uh, by looking at the experimental evidence that is, evidence that is the CO stretching vibration in these metal carbonyl complexes. Proton enamel spectroscopy is also used to understand the nature of the metal carbon bone as well as the nature of carbon heterocarbon bone in metal carbene complexes. So if you take a carbene complex Now, if the, there is a single bond between the carbon center and the oxygen atom over here, there is, it can freely rotate this particular bond and then uh, we will, if we record proton NMR spectra, then what we, will, we should see is only two signals for the two methyl groups. One of these methyl group will give us one signal for these protons uh, of this methyl group. Why? Uh, because the bond is rotating freely, uh, then uh, this particular methyl group uh, will essentially give us uh, only one particular signal. But if it is a double bond, then we can have two configuration. This is the trans configuration, and this is the cis configuration. This is where this is the cis configuration, and this is the trans configuration. And if it is true. Uh, if you know there is double bond connector between the carbon and the oxygen atom, then it is possible to have two configurations, cis and trans. Now, if you record uh, solid state structure, X ray structure for this molecule, what we will see is that, that, the, that the methyl group here is in trans configuration in the solid state, that is in case of the X ray crystal structure. But as you dissolve the compound in solution state, and if you record NMR spectra at minus 40 degrees Celsius. But you will see there are four signals. So this essentially tells that both the cis and trans isomers are present at minus 40 degrees Celsius in solution state because then only you can have four signals. Otherwise, you will have. Uh, otherwise, in the, if you have only one particular isomer is present, or if only the trans isomer is, is present, you will see only. Uh, Two, uh, two signals and if you do record or if you increase the temperature from minus 40 degrees uh, Celsius you again start seeing two signals in 1H NMR. This happens because now the bone can uh, do the, uh, the barrier to rotation around this CO bond is now uh, overcome at higher temperature and that is why it can freely move and this essentially leads to uh, and that is the reason why you will see only two signals in the proton NMR spectra when you record the NMR spectra at higher temperature. So again if you use a carbon 
with higher barrier to rotation. That is, if you take this particular curve in the CN bone, because now we have already stated that nitrogen is a better pi donor than oxygen, and that is why the uh, double bone character for the C and bone is going to be more than what you see in case of the uh, carbon oxygen bone and that is why the barrier to rotation in case of uh, this uh, particular fission carbon complex where there is nitrogen is uh, the subs heteroatom substituent is nitrogen is higher than what you see in case of the oxygen substituted uh, fission carbon complex and that is why if you record now proton NMR spectra even at higher temperature that is at around 100 degrees Celsius, uh, because the, the bone is not still able to freely rotate about this uh, this particular uh, because the double bone character is left, and that is why you see in this case three signals in the proton NMR spectra as both of these two uh, methyl uh, no that is uh, hydrogen atoms on these two methyl uh, groups have different chemical environments as they are, um, and that is why. We will see different signals for these three, uh, the hydrogen atoms on these two uh, methyl groups, and what we will see total are there are, there are three uh, signals in case of the proton NMR spectra. So this essentially tells us the significance of the uh, the double bond character between the carbon atom and the uh, heteroatom in these fissure carbon complexes. So we have now discussed the chemistry of alkylating complexes or the metal carbene complexes and soon after the preparation of these uh, metal carbene complexes where there is metal carbon uh, double bond is present, uh, complexes containing metal to carbon triple bond were also prepared. So this was done by the Fischer group first. Fischer carbine complexes say. So they started with a metal carbene complex and reacted this with BCL3, a Lewis acid. This essentially removes the OMO groups from the uh, carbene com carbon atom here and that is how a metal to carbene a metal to carbon triple bond is then formed. This is going to be positively charged as we have. Uh, And BCL4 negative plus BCL2 O CH3. This is what is formed. Then from here we will have this will decompose to give us Cl So this sort of uh, complexes where there is metal to carbon formal triple bond is present for metal carbine complexes or metal alkyl uh, alkyl uh, complexes are formed when we treat uh, the fissure carbon complex with uh, BCL3. So in this case, uh, the again what we see is that uh, there is a metal to carbon triple bond is there and the sp hybridized carbon atom is essentially attached to the metal center. So the carbon atom in this case is sp hybridized, uh, while one of the lobe of the sp hybridized carbon atom uh, or sp, sp hybridized lobe of the carbon atom here uh, binds to the use is used to form a sigma bond with the substituent on the carbon center here, and the other lobe on the uh, carbon atom or carbon carbon atom is essentially used for formation of uh, metal carbon bond. So this the carbon center is left with total three electrons, where two of the electrons are uh, 
present in the sp2 sp hybridized uh, vital on the carbon carbon atom and the another electron is present in the uh, mtp orbital on the carbon carbon uh, on the carbine carbon atom and one of the uh, p orbital is left empty so now this can form sigma bone with the metal center then uh, this also forms a pi bone with the uh, metal orbital of the right symmetry this orbital containing one electron while a dative or metal to pi uh, metal to ligand uh, pi bone uh, is again formed between the metal center and the carbon a carbon carbon atom by transfer of electron density from the metal to the carbon carbon atom and that is how a metal to carbon triple bond is essentially formed in these uh, complexes that is in metal carbine complexes so after Fischer prepared metal carbine complexes where metals are in low oxidation state we have seen in case of this tungsten uh, carbine complex the Srog group came up with a carbine complex where the metal center is in high oxidation state. So they, what they did is they just treated this tungsten precursor complex with neopentyl magnesium halide that is three. And this gave a tungsten complex in high oxidation state. And there is a tungsten to carbon triple bond is there in this particular complex. So this is what is again uh, a metal carbine complex where the metal center now is in higher oxidation state and what you see uh, in the uh, carbine complexes prepared initially by the Fischer group. So this essentially brings us to the end of this lecture and what we have done or that we have learned during this lecture are the chemistry of metal carbene complexes as well as the chemistry of metal carbine complexes. So initially what we have is uh, saw so how uh, Fischer carbine complexes can be prepared by treatment of metal uh, carbonyl complexes with uh, alkyl lithium or uh, alkyl magnesium halides and how one can you know uh, uh, the, the, the important aspects of these fissure carbine carbine complexes that is the metal must be in lower oxidation state in uh, fissure carbine complexes as well as there must be pi acceptor auxiliary ligands in the uh, attached metal center in these complexes as well as uh, the, there must be heteroatom substituents which are capable of uh, donating pi electrons to the carbon carbon atom in fissure carbon uh, complexes. Also, the, uh, the carbon center in the, uh, the carbon carbon center in fissure carbon complexes are essentially electrophilic in nature, and we have discussed reactions where this electrophilic nature of the carbon carbon atom is essentially uh, displayed. Also, then we discussed about the chemistry of shock carbon complexes uh, which are uh, different from the fissure carbon complexes as in this case the metal is in high oxidation state while there are no pi acceptor auxiliary ligands attached to the metal center and no heteroatom with pi electron or pi donating capability are also attached to the carbon carbon center the reactivity of the carbon carbon center in shock carbon complexes are also different from what we see in case of Fischer carbon complexes as in this case the electron the carbon carbon center is electron rich and they are nucleophilic in nature and they react with electrophiles or they undergo electrophilic additions we have seen or uh, substitution reactions as uh, uh, we have seen in case of one reaction where they undergo electrophilic addition reaction so then we also discussed about the bonding in uh, these uh, metal carbene complexes and we have seen that the carbon carbon atom is in singlet uh, electronic state in case of the fissure carbon complexes while it is in triplet uh, electronic state in case of the strong carbon complexes and this essentially explains the uh, different nature of reactivity of these 
Darwin complexes. Then we went on to discuss about the uh, spectroscopic evidence regarding the uh, pi acceptor and sigma donor capability of these metal, uh, these carbon ligands, and, we, and by comparing the uh, CO stretching vibration in metal carbon uh, in carbonyl complexes as well as uh, carbon complexes containing carbonyl as auxiliary ligand, we have seen that the carbon ligand is essentially is a poor pi acceptor than the uh, carbonyl ligand as well as it is a better sigma donor than the carbonyl ligand. Then we also discussed about the relevance of proton NMR or how proton NMR spectroscopy can be used to understand the nature of bonding in metal carbon complexes and then we discussed finally about the chemistry of metal carbine complexes. So we discussed how two different metal carbine complexes were prepared by the Fischer group and the Schrock group and also the bonding how the carbon, uh, sp hybridized carbon atom can bind to metal centers to form metal carbon from a triple bond in these complexes was discussed. So let me conclude this lecture, uh, this lecture with this and I thank you very much for being with me during this lecture.